Before we get into today's video, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance in hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, uh, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope everybody is in the holiday spirit. Has everybody done all your shopping if you're shopping? You got your menus laid out for Christmas? I don't, but I hope that you guys do. I do have a lot of good family time planned and that is truly the most important thing, right? So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a situation that, I mean, how do I say this the right way? It's very hard for a person like me to understand, but also, oh my goodness. We're going to be talking about the story of John Edward Jones. Now, John Edward Jones was a young husband and father, a family man, very close with his brother and his the rest of his family. He had a big family. They liked to get together during holidays, spend time together, and they also liked to go explore caves. Now I'm going to tell you guys this story from the best of my ability with the public information that is already out there. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you guys my opinions, which, and then I'm also going to even tell you guys a little piece of my experience. So if you guys want to hear any of that stuff, make sure you stay to the end. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you guys John's story now. John Edward Jones was 26 years old and he was originally from Utah, but he was living in Virginia to attend medical school. John loved spelunking, which is exploring caves, and he loved to do this with his family. He often went on caving expeditions with his father and brother Josh, even when they were young. Now at 26 years old, John was loving life. He was going to medical school. He was married to what he considered the woman of his dreams, a young woman woman named Emily. They had one daughter named Lizzie and Emily was pregnant with their second child. That was due June the following year. A, a little boy, as a matter of fact. John was happy, loving life, loving his family, on his career path, and just excited about the future. In November of 2009, John, Emily, and their daughter, Lizzie, went back to Utah so they could spend time with their families for Thanksgiving. As a family, they decided that they wanted to explore a cave called the Nutty Putty Cave, and this cave is about 55 miles outside of Salt Lake City. The Nutty Putty Cave was discovered in 1960 by Dale Green, and he named it the Nutty Putty Cave because the slippery clay found in most of its narrow tunnels. At its peak, as many as 25 thousand people will visit this cave per year. Now John hadn't explored any caves recently and he was really excited to get back into it. However, he wasn't as small as he used to be. John was six foot tall now and he was weighing about 200 pounds. Unfortunately, John did not know, none of his family knew, that this would be the last time he would ever explore a cave. On November 29th of 2009, at around 8 p.m., John and his brother Josh, who was 23 at the time, along with nine other friends and family members, decided to go and enter the Nutty Putty Cave. About an hour into the expedition, John decided to find a cave called the Birth Canal. That sounds like a tight cave the birth canal. Now this was considered to be a more dangerous part of the cave. Obviously it's named the birth canal. It's very tight and it's only recommended, well, I don't know if recommended is the right word, but it's only expected for people that are actually like professionals or well-trained cavers to be able to even attempt to go through the birth canal. Here's a picture right here of an explorer named Cammy crawling out of the birth canal. John thought that he had found the passageway to the birth canal, so he began to move forward through it. He went through it head first and he was using like his fingers and his hips 
and his body to try to wiggle himself through this tight part of the cave that he believed was indeed the birth canal. Within minutes, though, John realized that he had made a mistake. He was stuck and he had no room to turn himself around. He didn't even have enough room to wiggle himself out. So he just tried to keep like moving forward. He could not go backwards, so he just kept trying to move forward. As he moved forward, he would try to, you know, suck in in order to make his stomach tighter. However, when he would do that in an XL, and move forward, he was getting more and more stuck. It is said that this part of the cave is only as big as a laptop screen. John's brother Josh went to look for him and he was the first person to find John. When he did, he was trying to pull him out by his calves, but he was just too stuck. And at this point, because of the nutty putty canals with the clay is a little bit slippery, he was actually slipping further and further into the canal and he had one of his arms pinned under him. The other was pinned behind him. He just could not move at all. This is when Josh just began to pray with John. Once he realized he was not going to be able to get his brother out, they decided that yes, Josh needed to exit the cave and go and get help. And I cannot even imagine this moment, okay? It is right before Thanksgiving. Your brother is in town with his beautiful wife. He's in med school, like he's living the dream. He's got one daughter, he's got his first son on the way, and you guys are just gonna go explore this cave, something you've basically been doing since you were kids. You go into this new cave, and he's stuck stuck, and he's uncomfortable, and he cannot get out, to the point that you've gotta go all the way back out the cave in this dark, wet, tight area, crawl out of the cave, and call for help. Now, it took help a long time to get there. But when they arrived, John was still trapped 400 feet into the cave and 100 feet below the earth's surface. It took over an hour just for the rescue crew to get their equipment back down to John to even attempt to try to get him out. An hour. The first rescuer to reach John was a woman named Susie. She arrived at around 12.30 a.m. on November 25th. At that point, John had been trapped for three and a half hours hours. So Susie gets to him. She can only see his feet. She introduces herself to him. She's like, hey buddy, we're going to get you out. And John says, as he's completely trapped in this tunnel, a hundred feet below the earth's surface, 400 feet in, he tells her, hi Susie, Susie, nice to meet you, but I would really like to get out of here now. Over the next 24 hours, more than a hundred rescuers worked to get John out. Their plan was to use a system of pulleys and ropes. It is even said that back in 2004, not too long before John got stuck in this cave, two different Boy Scouts ended up getting stuck in the cave and they almost didn't make it out too. Somebody had to come and rescue them. And for a while, this cave, this Nutty Putty Cave was closed to the public. They had just actually reopened it when John went in with his family, and again, it was John, his brother, and nine other family members and friends. I mean, this wasn't just like him going and doing something. This was a group of them that went to go and do this. They had just reopened that cave. Now, several hours into John being stuck, time was really running out for him. He was actually stuck in a downward angle. So he is head down, blood rushing to his head, again, 100 feet below the earth's surface, 400 feet in a dark, damp cave. Because of the position that he was in, it made his heart have to work so much harder than a normal heart to pump the blood out of his brain and back to his lungs because of the gravity. The rescuer, Susie, said that she could hear John's voice becoming more nasally as his breathing became labored. She knew that this meant John's lungs were filling with fluid. John's wife, Emily, was actually back at the house that night. She didn't go to explore the cave. She stayed at home with her daughter. And when she heard that John was stuck in the cave, she thought, you know, you know, she prayed, he's going to get out, he's going to be fine. However, she never got that call saying that they had released him or, or gotten him free. So the next day, she ended up coming down to the cave. And I just can't imagine the panic. You're standing there at the cave, looking at this deep hole, knowing that your husband is in there upside down, on his head, stuck. You've got all of these professionals, all of this like high-tech expensive equipment, 
and they're not able to get him out. Nevertheless, the rescuers continued to work diligently to try to get John out. They even tied a rope connected to pulleys to John, but suddenly one of the pulleys broke. And although they were kind of pulling him up, when the pulleys broke, he slid back down into the hole on his head and afterwards he wasn't responding. Rescuers even ordered six gallons of vegetable oil to try to help John slide out and even considered using explosives, but they quickly realized neither would work. The larger equipment was too big to position near John and the smaller equipment was too slow. Earlier, they tried to widen the tunnel to prepare for John's exit and it took an hour just to drill through six inches of rock. So it's not like they could just drill him out. An hour for six inches. With no hope of rescuing John and his heart having suffered hours of strain due to his downward position, John was pronounced dead by a paramedic just before midnight on November 25th, 28 hours after getting stuck. John's family was completely devastated and they did still thank all the rescuers for their hard work because, you know, they were risking their lives too, even going down there and setting up all of this equipment. And so they were very grateful to them. But can you imagine, like, right before Thanksgiving, now everybody's twos going back to the house and John is not coming with them. And knowing the position that he was in, and it was a complete accident how he got stuck. And now, uh, just the whole thing is like a horror movie. It is horrendous. I, I know for me personally, I've watched a ton of movies or documentaries about, like, cave divers and stuff. And it's not for me. I respect it. It is definitely not for me. I am very claustrophobic, but to think of being in this position that he was in, it's devastating. And when I was researching about this case, I learned that this actually happens. I don't want to say a lot. I mean, it's not a lot, right? But it, it, it happens. We'll just say that this is not like a, a one-off thing. People get stuck in these caves. In this situation with John, they were never able to recover his body. They could not get his body out. So they ended up sealing this cave off with concrete and it now serves as a memorial and a grave site for John. In 2016, a movie came out called The Last Descendant, which is basically based on John's experience. It is said to give an accurate look from John's point of view and what it felt like to be trapped in the most narrow passageways when claustrophobia sets in. On June 15th, Emily gave birth to their son and she named him John after his father, which is so precious. What do I think about this? It's absolutely horrible. I don't think John did anything wrong. This is the thing that people do every day. Again, 25,000 people at, at its peak would go and visit this cave a year. I don't know if they all went through all the tunnels or if they just went and visited it, but still, it's a lot. When I was in Tennessee years ago with my family, everybody wanted to go to this like underwater, uh, un underground waterfall. Like it's a natural waterfall and it is like, I think a thousand feet underground and you ride an elevator and you walk through all these caves and it's not tight. You walk through it and there's handrails, but it's still, I never ever want to do that again. That was an experience that I had, but when I tell you guys, when I got to the bottom and we were starting to go through the caves and my brain started telling me, you are a thousand feet under the ground. You are in a cave under the ground. What if that elevator stops working? What if this, that, 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 that. I had to do my breathing exercises to get through it. It was beautiful. We took some nice pictures by the waterfall. It was absolutely incredible to know that there's actually waterfalls literally waterfalls under the ground, a thousand feet. But I never, ever, ever need to see that in person again, a day in my life. That life, I, I couldn't, I have so much respect for people that can do this stuff, skydiving. Our oldest son and my husband went skydiving. But for me, it, it's not for me. So when I hear about these stories and I read about this stuff, my heart just thinking about a person being in this position, he literally crawled into his own grave completely on accident on Thanksgiving, doing something that he had done since he was a kid. And you always think that, well, the rescue workers will be able to get you out. 
And imagine the rescue workers too, man, because they were down there talking to him and encouraging him and telling him not to give up. And everything they tried just didn't work. Oh, oh my goodness. Have y'all heard about this? Have y'all seen the movie, The Last Descendant? Let me know what you guys think down below. I sure hope that Emily and the kids are doing well. And I'm glad that they made the movie and shared his story. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. Have you ever done anything like that? Are you a cave diver? Let me know down below. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.